this video is designed to show you how to access the library and search for scholarly articles. You can actually access the library from two different places. One, you can be logged into your My EFSC and click on this handy dandy button called Library Resources and it will open up this page here. It takes a minute or two to load as you can see um, and that's because it's actually logging me in because I was logged in through the My EFSC there. Now the other way to do that is to literally from the www.easternflorida.edu slash library. You can also get that from the link here. You'll see this great big blue button that says click to search the library. Now I was already logged in, but normally you might see up here a sign in button. You want to click that, sign in using your the same credentials you used to log into your My EFSC. And that's what gives you actual full access to the library database. So now once you're here, you can literally search for anything. Let's say you're writing your paper on emotions. We can just hit enter after I type that in. What that's going to do is it's going to search everything and give me all sorts of stuff that I'm maybe not looking for. So probably if you're writing a paper for my class, you are going to want to find your resources online. You don't want them to be something you have to go in person. This is an online class. So we're going to check that box that says available online. We're going to come down here into resource type and we're going to click the box for articles because that's really the main thing that we're looking for things that are published in journals for us we don't want our paper to be or our i'm sorry the resources that we use to be more than like five years old so if it's 2022 we're looking at 2017 to, to now right um and i think we'll click off peer review journals too because that's how we know they're nice and scholarly all right, so we've got that. We can click, um, we'll keep that. We're gonna hit apply filters. And now what this is gonna do is you notice it got rid of the video and the book and the things that were there, okay? And I know that all of these are available online no matter what. So there are easy ways I can click on this. And if I click on that title, it should open up this screen here. And I can scroll down and I can read the description or the abstract that the, authors have submitted. I can see this, get this PDF or read it online. Either one should work. I'll click on that one and I'll click on the other one just to show you how it opens up in separate tabs. So in this version, sometimes opening the PDF is handy when you're trying to do your citations. Uh oh, that didn't work. Ah, see, this one did work. So um, I'm going to say no to that. So I could download the PDF if I wanted, but this gives me a lot of the information I need, right? I can read the abstract, I can scroll down and then start reading the entire paper. Bop, 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 bop. Yay. Okay, and I can decide um, if this paper is gonna work for my research for writing my paper. And there's another couple of um, videos in the module and elsewhere that kind of give you some pointers on how to read scientific articles and things like that. Another cool thing about this is I could have also clicked it right here. See, it says Sage Journal. I could have clicked that. It would have also bringing me to the same place. Ta-da, okay. What's something cool about this is I can click this cool citation button and I can select the kind of citation I'm looking for. So I want an APA seventh edition. That's what we're writing in in our class. And I'm gonna get a, a citation that's pretty close to correct. I can tell you right now, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, this automated citation builder will always leave the first author, or if it's a single author, you can see the author's name up here. It always leaves off the first author's first initial. So this actually isn't correct. You would have to put a comma after Ortony, comma, A, period, then the year name. So if there's five uh, authors or one author, that first author's name is always gonna have his first initial left off and that's incorrect for APA formatting. So you are welcome to hit this little copy citation and then when you go into your document, um, let's just pretend that this is, I'm gonna copy and paste my um, citation here, I'd want to add that A here. And you can see that I have mine set up to copy and paste um, without all the formatting. So the title and the um, issue need to be in italic. So I would actually need to come, I'm sorry, the title of the journal, not the title of the article. So I put that in italics and then I come right there, hit space, ta-da, that is now in proper APA format. So that link 
the button here, the citation is appropriate, it will work for you a lot of the times, but you do need to double check that it's all correct. Okay, so that's the basics. And if you decide you don't like this article, you could hit this nice little X like that, and you can scroll down and then, you know, keep going. Ta-da, I clicked on that. It's going to bring me right to this. I'm going to read the description. Does that make sense? I don't know. It sounds good. Click on the next link, open that up, read the whole article, decide if I want that. Okay, if I don't, I come here, you know, and then the other thing you can do is you can go to advanced search. Let's say I want to keep the search with the emotions, but maybe I want to, maybe I, I have an author in mind. So let's say I want to read an, a, a study by an author about emotions and let's say I, and I could type that in here, or there's a particular journal that I would like to use. Um, or if I'm not really sure and I want to do emotions and memory together. I could hit search. Okay. It should keep, I don't know if it keeps my filters. Let's find out. It didn't keep my other filters. So I have to click all of those again, which is not that bad. I'll just do that real fast. Come over here to creation date, go 2017, apply. All right. I think that's correct. Um, well, hopefully I did that correct. You guys get the idea though. So then here you can see now I've got articles that are giving me both of those words, okay? So anyway, there is also other resources that will be linked in this module such as BUILT, which is the, oh, what does that stand for? Basic Information Literacy Tutorial from um, the college library. There'll also be a couple of other videos for you to watch that kind of give you a little bit more pointers on exactly how you might want to uh, conduct your research. But I hope that this is enough for you for right now. So good luck. If you need any help, remember, I can't help you if you don't let me know. So be sure to send me an email and set up a meeting. I'm happy to go over this with you on Teams and help you guys walk through this, okay?